I think when we talk about the burden of disease, don't think about the burden of disease just being the plaque, since we're focusing mostly on plaque, because people can have more than one type of psoriasis, and oftentimes they do. Uh, Margaret, do you want to talk about some of the other types of psoriasis that we need to always keep in mind? Right. So following what you both said, I think it's important that this is not, it's, it's, the onus is on us to help our patients understand this is not one and done, and it's the burden of chronic disease, and we have to teach that. So <clears throat> today we're going to treat you, and this is not going to go away with, you know, a 10-day therapy. This is lifelong disease. And in that lifelong disease, you may have genital psoriasis. You may have inverse. So we have to teach those patients that there are, there are different types of psoriasis that are plaque. Now, genital psoriasis, one of the most underdiagnosed forms. And what do we know? That, you know, the onset, this is a young person's disease. So go back to Melody's, you know, patient who's 20 years old in the prime of her life, um, and you know, maybe she thinks she has an STD um, instead, because it doesn't look like the other plaques. You know, a patient who's exposed to strep and has strep and then ends up with a guttate um, plaque psoriasis. But most importantly, going back to those patients, doing a good, good um, body evaluation and discussing with them so that they can plan. And also, what are the other, what's happening in your life? You know, you know, what is your weight? What are your um, comorbidities? Us addressing them and helping them understand that this isn't just on the outside, this is on the inside. Mm -hmm. So I think from my perspective, this is um, a chronic disease. It's gonna be a long-term relationship and one that we can help address the comorbidities. Yeah, and I think that, don't you feel like that that's uniquely um uh, focused on our skill set as advanced practice clinicians. Yes. I mean, as, as NPs and PAs, this is exactly what, um, what we are trained and encouraged to Chronic do. Chronic disease you know, to, management. To, to take on that yeah. time. Uh, that's, that's not to say that, uh, that, that, that the dermatologists you know, aren't, aren't taking the time, those who are focused on this, but at least in our clinical practice, you know, I'm empowered and encouraged you know, to be the one that can take that time to review these comorbidities, do these exams, be on, you know, be educated on these medications, allowing uh, my my um, collaborative physician to have time to do things that they want to focus on, which may be more surgery and other things. So I'm not trying to pigeonhole us one way or the other, but it is nice that as NPs and PAs that we have this um, this we we feel that this is the skill set we definitely bring to the table. Chron you know, managing chronic disease, talking about the whole patient and doing and those I things. And I say so. that to patients too. I say. This is a disease that we're gonna to manage together. This is a chronic problem. I may be able to get you very clear or completely clear, but it is still something that we're gonna to do together long-term. Right. Hopefully you won't have to come in to see me as frequently as maybe you do up front, but we're gonna do this together. And I kind of you know, tell them that in that way too, so that, because I feel like working together with our patient as a team is really important that they know I'm on their side, they're on my side, you know, that we're gonna to try to get them clear together. So is Nurse practitioners and PAs, we've been working in dermatology for a long time, and there are so many new needs coming in from access to dermatologic care. And so as the rising need and the limited access to care is there, I think that it's gonna be exciting to see nurse practitioners and physician assistants in addressing people holistically, and we address their chronic disease and acute care diseases, but the onus is also upon us as being a specialist in dermatology to one, understanding that it's, it's not just a label. We are invested in education, in training. Many of us are involved in research, clinical trials. We have many nurse scientists. Um, we are um, also engaged in publications. We are educators in universities and colleges or in our local communities, as well as um, working as a collaborative team, um, all of us, no matter where we are, um, as an expert in, in dermatology, should be working collaborative with dermatologists. What happens when we have those patients who are outside of the box? You know, that's what we get. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we have experts across the country and, you know, consulting, collaborating 
is so important with our you know, board certified dermatologist, with the rheumatologist, with our surgeons. And so um, I think it's exciting, but the onus is on us to make sure that we are accountable, that we are educated and trained well, and we're responsible, but it's exciting. And there are very few patients that you meet and you start them on a biologic therapy and they stay 100% clear for the entire relationship that you have. Because a lot of times I'll say long-term yep. and we start talking about, let's get you diagnosed, let's figure out what the best therapy is for this point. And then with each subsequent visit, and uh, we can talk about how we do those assessments initially and how we do those assessments as we move through the relationship. A lot of times you just see a patient a couple times a year and or making sure they don't have skin cancers because there is an increased incidence in skin cancers. And so you need to be able to find those and refer them out to the most surgeon you work with. Mm -hmm. Or, But as the progression goes, people do have flares. They have things that happen in life. Um, they, they have other illnesses and, and it's just a disease that can be managed, but it, it's always gonna be a part of their life. And all of the other factors associated with their disease can also be issues. And some lifestyle things that we've mentioned can have an impact to help. Mm -hmm. But I feel like that we have to make sure that we understand it's not one and done. You don't just see them, write a script and have them walk out the door. Mm -hmm. And NPs and PAs are the largest growing segment of care providers for people with psoriatic disease. Whether it's in the derm clinic or the room clinic, we are taking a bigger role and I love the role. I love the relationship building. I love seeing people at this point in my life, uh, all the work that we did and the struggles and the battles in the early years, now they don't have to experience that because we were talking about genetics earlier. When we first had that big publication and we told patients, hey, we found out there are these gene linkages to psoriasis. I thought they would be excited because that was new science that we were hoping would lead to a genetic cure, which unfortunately just showed that it was too complex at this mm -hmm. point, but it did lead to, lead to what uh, the biologic system of therapies we have now. But we had some ladies who would say, I'm not gonna have children because I don't wanna pass this on because it's so devastating. And now when you see somebody that has it, you say the great thing is that even if your child does have psoriasis, this is a disease that we can almost always control and manage. So it doesn't have to impact you in that way anymore because the progression of the disease and all the complexities of the things that you have to deal with as clinicians that you need to um, mention.